But um, I mean, the band we're playing with tonight, Young Dreams, mm -hmm. they're probably one of my favourite new bands. In fact, I would say they are. So you should check them out. There have been some really big venues on this tour of Europe and stuff, places I would never imagine we would um, hold a concert where people would come just to watch us yeah, and the support band, obviously, um, whose dressing room we are currently sitting in. Um, Quite nice. Yeah. Treating, treating them well. Mm -hmm. Got a uh, carton <laughs> of beer over there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like it was pretty surreal the other day when we played Brixton because that was like 5,000 people or something. Yeah. Which was pretty insane. But, um, yeah, I mean, as... as um, as weird and wrong as it sounds, we're actually starting to get used to playing to audiences of this size. You know, like it's kind of like what, once you play a gig to to once you play a gig to people with like two thousand people, it just the first one kind of breaks the ice, mm -hmm. and then after that, it just feels like you know you just feel like they're your friends. You know, I don't know. You just feel more comfortable after the first one you've done. But the first time I ever saw you live, and I've been waiting for months and months when you come to the UK, it was Glastonbury. Oh, you right. played the Pyramid Stage yeah. in Glastonbury. Like, after the first EP, but before Inner Speaker came out, so that, that must have been a massive venue, but not as packed as obviously you're selling things out now. I think a lot of people had still to discover you then, hadn't they? Yeah, I mean, stages that big, just they just don't seem to suit our sound you know like none of us are big enough rock stars to be able to have the charisma to, to <laughs> rile uh, to rile that many people up or get them get them going you know like there are plenty more bands out there that can do it but you know we're not really I don't really see that we're one of them so the last time I saw you, you just finished you were you're in the midst of the tour for Inner Speaker you know obviously you've been writing new record since then but did mm -hmm. you take any time out or was it just straight back to, to writing again well, there's never really a, a distinction between writing time and touring time because even even for us, like we never really knew when the EP tour finished and the you know, speaker tour started. <laughs> for us, it's just going on tour. You know, we um we don't really consider that the fans are acknowledging it as like this album tour or like last album tour. You know, the fans just come to see it because they want to see the band. They don't really care what. I mean, obviously they care about the albums, but they don't care that this particular tour is the Inner Speaker tour and this one's the Lonerism tour, <laughs> which is the same way we feel. It's kind of just going on tour and playing gigs. Because we, we play just as many songs from the last album as we did this album. Because you're quite well known for, like, writing and recording everything yourself. I mean, is, have you still worked exactly the same way on Lonerism or was there more input from other musicians? It was pretty much the same as the last album in terms of outside... Um, influence. I mean, even with the last album, Dom was there a lot of the time, kind mm. of co-producing in a way. Yeah. And uh, and the other guys played in a couple of songs. And it's the same with this album. They uh, Jay Jay plays keyboard right. on two songs, but the rest is is just me. And Lonerism. Why that? Why that name? Pretty cool again. Oh. You seem to have a great knack for one word uh, oh, titles. Oh wow! That's, I thought we were going to hate it. Actually, <laughs> I just, I, I, I've actually felt like it was a bit of a risk calling it Lonerism. I thought no one was going to buy an album called Lonerism because it sounded too self-deprecating, you know? <laughs> like, it's, it's one step away from loserism. <laughs> so why Lonerism? Where did that word come from for you? It's kind of a made-up word. I hadn't really um, uh, encountered it before. But, I mean, it's just, it's just trying to um, describe the way of life of the loner, really, you know? Or not even really the way of life of the loner. is like... The, grow, the, the evolution or the um, how someone can really turn into someone that doesn't really associate with the outside world much. You know, this is this album is very much about that person growing up and like discovering the outside world and having interactions with people and realizing that it's just it doesn't work as well as it seems to for other people. You know, all these songs are about other people, mm. uh, ironically, and um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems to describe the the album will. I mean, I feel like when you go backwards is is uh, is the kind of slow, groovy, okay. pseudo hip hop number of the album, <laughs> which always seems to have have a definitive vibe on stage. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I guess Elephant seems to get people nice and grooving about. Very energetic. Yeah, yeah, which is which is rare for us. You know, not not, not many of our songs get people going. <laughs> Uh, the more we're blissing out kind of cheese. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of what we've got used to. People just sort of sitting there like, you know, 
nodding their heads slowly. Yeah. Going, yeah, this is pretty cool. <laughs> but no one ever really goes crazy. And this is, this year seems to be a bit of an explosion of, of Australian music. I mean, some of your band members uh, are in Pond as well. And they, they've they been everywhere this year. Is it all a bit um, strange for you to see them off touring, doing different things, trying to fit that entertainment parlour as well? Uh, it wasn't so much strange. It, was, it seemed fitting in a way because... <laughs> They are, they, are, they are amazing musicians, they're an amazing band. And um, in a way it seemed kind of wrong that Tame Impala was the only one that was yeah. being noticed in the outside world. So it's, for us it's kind of just like, it was bound to happen. And, uh, and it's, it's great, you know, it's, it's great that they get their own time. They, that, like, that people see that it's not all just about Tame Impala, that yeah. we have like, other bands and, and they kind of get a sense of how the scene works because half of us are in other people's bands and all that kind of stuff. I know, that's what I was trying to work out, but it's quite hard to find that out. Are there any other projects in related to this scene that I should know about or should be checking out? Um, There's some that you should know about, but (laughs) if you feel like it... uh, I mean, a good good friend of ours um, who plays in Pond, actually, has a band called The Growl. Yeah, I've heard of that. And uh, they're currently releasing an album, I think. Um, And uh, there's The Silence... I mean, I, I could go on forever, that's the thing. If I, it's, it's opening a can of worms to just name one of them. So I'm just going to stop there with those two. <laughs> and you've been lending your production duties elsewhere as well. I'm really excited to hear the Melody's Echo Chamber album. I've only heard one track so Oh, far. OK, cool. Um, how, how did you get involved with Melody? Um, I met her in Paris, and uh, she was talking about doing some recording. She, we sort of bonded on uh, drum sounds and mm-hmm. other sort of production studio y topics. And uh, yeah, I mean she just had all these demos of um, um, her songs, you know, that she just needed someone to take them that next step, you know, to get them sounding like the songs that she wanted them to sound like. Because she does these demos on a little sort of Yamaha keyboard with a cheap drum machine and you know she she can't really get get it to the next step so she just needed someone to, to be the the hands of mm-hmm. the album. Which was great for me. How does it differ for you working on your own music to working on somebody else's music? Does it um, help keep you fresh or just give Totally. You- totally. Well, especially with Melody, she's always um, wanting to try new things, you know, things that I probably wouldn't I wouldn't try, you know, like digital digital effects, digital distortion, that kind of weird stuff. Um, I kind of shy away from but she goes, she strides boldly into that territory. Are you very much an analog kind of man? Not at all, not at all. It's just kind of like when it comes to making those kinds of sounds, I generally try to keep it sort of like warm and warm and fuzzy mm-hmm. rather than like gritty and raw rather than like raw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which you know. And so it's it just uh, it, it really refreshes it really refreshed my um, approach to making music. What's coming up in the next few months? Are you gonna get home for Christmas? I don't know, actually. I'm pretty sure we'll be Festival at Festival season at home, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's starting up, definitely. I mean, we're playing in New Zealand on New Year's Eve. Cool. So that'll be really cool. Um, but I think we have some time off, sort of, over the, the, the most intense summer months. I think we've got, like, sort of, most of December and January, I think we have off, which is beautiful, because it's the best time of year to be in Perth. Absolutely. What do you do when you have time off? Um, <laughs> same thing everyone does, just go to the beach. <laughs> Hey, you get that to, to be able to do that. If we did that, we'd freeze. Right. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> well, the same thing everyone in Perth does, okay. basically. Okay. Well, just enjoy- sit around and, uh, you know, yeah. Well, enjoy your time off. Thank you for another amazing record. Uh, oh, we look forward to no Loserism. <laughs> Loserism, yeah. That's the next one. That's, that's the spin-off uh, EP, actually. Is that the remix album? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for the chat.